Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Madam Web. This is a weird one. First off, I say this in some of my podcasts, but I don't like to look at other people's reviews or get a general idea of what the consensus is out there about a movie. But I do a little, you know, couple of things before I actually do the podcast. So this one was a little more difficult because when I did my normal routine, I started finding that the actresses, or one in particular, a couple here and there, were actually upset with the movie and upset maybe with the experience or what Marvel Sony did. So that might impact things. But I've taken a break as things aren't going so great. So I'm a little confused at why I actually like the movie. And I've admitted to liking shitty movies in the past. And this has been kind of connected or uh, compared to Morbius. I might put this in the same spot. In that it looks like someone had did the best of what they could, what they had. But there's a lot of disjointed stuff going on in the movie. Maybe a little more than Morbius. However, um, I had fun. I watched the movie. I liked it. That's not to say alarm bells didn't go off or I didn't roll my eyes at a couple of parts in this movie. So, right off the bat, it's a little weird because, like I said, it, it's it's afterwards that I put my, my, my podcast out and then I'll watch some of the shows that I like or even dislike. Just to get an idea of people I agree with or don't agree with. And sometimes I change my mind. It's not like I do an update to the podcast. But in talking with my friends and, you know, going online, I can be, you know, I can admit to things or understand things in a, a new way that'll give me a little more insight and change my perspective on the actual podcast I did. And like this, talking about Madam Web. So I might be a little impacted in that. But again, I'm at a bad point. I took a break. I wish things were better. I did not expect to watch this. I thought I was going to be annoyed and angry. Because that's happened. I've come on these podcasts and just admitted, you know, could it be this? My mood set, you know, mindset going into things. And did it impact this? Uh, you know, this movie made me fucking angry. And a part of me, maybe the part I don't uh, like too much, wants to just start ragging on the movie. Uh Unlike my rant with Batman, which I put on the thing, like, uh, I changed the title. I only did that once or twice when I played with the words, but Madam Web is basically, I think, a Sony's universe. Who knows? Spider-Man connected, whatever. It didn't register in my mind because when the movie starts off in 1973 with the main character's mom in, I think, the jungles of Peru... It already set me in a point where I wouldn't expect anything. And I'm not that type of person who reads comic books or watches movies and goes, why didn't Thor show up? Where was Captain America? That, that stuff just doesn't compute with me. It doesn't register. I don't need to worry about those things in a general sense. But it's 1973. I'm okay with what's going on. It was a little interesting and a little bit more real in the sense that there are people out in jungles looking up for certain insects and spiders and flowers. And even when you look at um, some of the higher standards of science, there is something about regional knowledge. And science, even brilliant, amazing scientists can and will go to regional gurus or something who are not maybe, you know, have PhDs and understand physics and whatever. But they have a, a, a knowledge of the area and the the history of what's going on with the plants and stuff so i'm okay with that i actually enjoyed that to be honest and you find out that the mother's working with a assistant they find what they need and spoilers she's betrayed but she's pregnant and this is a little weird in a dark dark way but they come back to that with the precog ability with the daughter who survives the gunshot wound for the mother they the the gist of what they were looking for in a certain insect spider had given native people 
abilities spider-like in the sense of being able to climb trees and swing around stick to things possibly but you don't get to highlight that as like a wall but yes they do spider-man like climb and cling to trees they save the mother the villain gets away with what he needs and they give uh, she gets bitten by the spider that gives her abilities but it's too late the powers go into the daughter and unlike I guess the majority it's called the decipher and like I said I might have liked the movie but it's not a you know excellently made movie but you get the gist that most people would get spider enhanced abilities jumping leaping strength sticking to things and she um the daughter Cassandra is well, it, it shows in an event that she gains precognitive abilities and sees visions of the future, possibilities, etc. But it doesn't happen until there's a accident. Uh, so it's in the future. The tribe says if the mother needs any, or if the daughter needs anything, and there's like a diary. So she has a history of her mom and what she did. But it doesn't play a story in 2003 or whatever when it catches up to the daughter is an ambulance driver helping people. And I was a little surprised because, like I said, I don't like to look at things and read into things or watch many trailers and, in a general sense, uh, what happens afterwards with the discussions. But I was surprised that Peter Parker, Spider-Man's parents, were in the movie. And that was a little bit um, of a surprise that I liked. I don't know why. Again, I'm in a bad place. Things, you know, things aren't going so well. And I... I a part of me wants to be mad and angry and just fucking trash a movie, but... So, I'm already okay in the movie. The beginning of the movie with the mom and the flashback is fine. I liked it. The, um... The birth of Cassandra's powers as she's involved in, you know, saving people's lives. And it triggers an ability after she almost dies. Uh, so, she's in the thick of it as an ambulance driver... Which is one of the passes I give to the movie for driving around like a lunatic. <laughs> there are certain people like, you know, school bus drivers in Brooklyn, New York, by the way. So it's Queens. The movie takes place. You have a common sense and a natural ability if, you, if you're in that, you know, type of um, job. <laughs> you know, you know how to drive. So it, in that case, it was actually pretty good. But you then get into what the plot of the movie is and the villain Ezekiel is played by visions he has limited precognition and he knows that three women dressed as spider type heroes will kill him at certain points so he's hunting these women down and he spent the last 20 30 years developing technology and working in secret to make it happen and I'm fine with that uh, again, this didn't register in my brain. Oh, it's 2003. Isn't Iron Man, you know, come, I, I don't care. It didn't, didn't matter. But even if you said, oh, no, Iron Man was 2008, whatever. But there we are. And I'm actually okay at this point. When I look back and see it's, the movie's directed by S.J. Clarkson, I don't know. I really don't know who Dakota Johnson is, Cindy Sweeney. These are the stars in the movie. Uh, Isabella Merced. You know... I know who Mike Epps was from a lot of the movies I've seen him in, but he's a small part. And, uh, you know, Adam Scott playing the father, Peter Parker, Emma Roberts. Uh, you know, things here and there you're caught, but nothing's registering to me as everything is bad, is going bad. I'm involved in the beginning of the movie. I like her attitude. Uh, I had this issue, I think, with She-Hulk, because I like that show. <laughs> Uh, and I want it to come back. I can't fucking. I want it. I, I get pissed when I hear things like, "Oh, it's, it's, they didn't like it." And I wish, because at this point in the movie, I wish they didn't give a fuck. I wish it really wasn't about money and whatever. Yes, you shouldn't have complaints on the set or you know lies. The studio fucked you over. So that I'm trying to keep separately. But you're a great actress, and all well, this whole fucking cast because. I liked the movie, and I didn't see the bullshit there, but I could see where people could pick it out, um, you know, an actor's portrayal, or how much 
I don't know, fucking effort they're putting in. But I didn't mind. I started liking the chemistry because um, Cassandra starts getting involved in these precog abilities for these three girls, but they're not the superheroes yet. They're just three regular women or young ladies, teenage, whatever the fuck they are. Because they act more like teenagers. And it gets a little annoying in the right places, I thought. Some of the, you know, chemistry was pretty good. And I was, I was a little, you know, I knew what was coming. And I was kind of okay with it. Surprisingly, again, you're going to show precog abilities. You're going to show a revert, a rewind, and doing it differently. And some movies will do it, like, as a, even a joke, like, you know, 37 tries later. You know, or the Flash movie, like, I keep trying to change the past. But she's seeing potential <clears throat> futures or whatever. So, what you know, I'm, I'm not caring that much, I gotta admit. But here's where the movie starts to, I guess, you know, get bogged down and get pulled apart as a critic, you know, if you're examining the movie. But I gotta admit, I'm, I'm, I was really, and I still, to the end, was enjoying it. But you can see where it starts to, you know, pull apart too much and not go with certain things. I think a couple of the scenes that are, you know, kind of enjoyable with, uh, you know, some of the banter and what's going on and this development of a fucking guy in a Spider-Man light costume is just hunting them down and almost killing them. But from Cassandra's point of view, he's succeeding. Like He comes in, he breaks one girl's neck, kills the other one, and, and then she snaps into the present for her. And she's starting to learn her powers. There is a kind of bullshit moment power, but it is it is fore, foreshadowed about Cassandra's abilities. But since she didn't get the physical enhancement, she got the precog. But it, it gets it gets put up to the you know to the moon in a sense. But I'm a, again, I didn't walk. I didn't get angry. I didn't get upset. And maybe this is that reverse psychology well, no, well, psychology in a sense that. Anything at this point that would have distracted me from the shit that's going on <laughs> was going to be a happy memory and it'll be something I look back on. Because I still look back and enjoy Morbius. I watch fucking Green Lantern way too much. So, I try to give myself a break and be honest on these podcasts, but I'm enjoying this movie, the plot, how it, I was, I felt bad for the mother and the daughter. I like her as an actress i like most of them for the most part again the villain gets the you know short end of the stick in this it's a little bit cliche and it doesn't feel right from somebody who has limited precog you know but he's a villain he's showing up he at least he doesn't shoot webbing and stuff like that and there's a point in the movie where Cassandra's got to fucking figure out what's going on, because, to be honest, you, you're in Queens, New York, you're not driving a fucking police car around, you know, for more than 10 minutes, or a stolen ambulance, or a taxi, these things don't happen. Yeah, you could secretly steal a car from a, a, someone's backyard, or the parking lot of a supermarket, and you might have three hours, and even then, okay, the hunt's on, but there's no... Because I'm, you know, Brooklyn, New York at one time is fucking insane how many cars were being broken into, things they would steal out. So I, I do have a pass with that in a sense. I, 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 don't, I didn't go out and steal cars, but I, I was around people. And you can see it happening for a normal, everyday, you get lucky shot with. Even if the person notices the car is missing within a half hour, it's just not going to get found for a certain time. Fine. But no, this is overboard and outrageous for someone who lives in Brooklyn and it's one of the biggest things that you know made me roll my eyes and you know one thing you regret in the movie watching that it doesn't um go to the level because if me if it's me and I'm writing it and you're from Queens New York the first thing you say is no I gotta you know anybody we gotta go to a place and buy a car with cash and just you know get it out of the way have some you have to do something get Peter's father, uh, you know, someone to give you a car in that sense. It doesn't feel like it's an urgent thing, and it kind of annoys you. So that'll be the main thing for me. And it's not even her berserk powers of precog later in the movie. 
But she starts controlling her powers in a sense when she realizes she has to go to Peru because she finds her mother's stuff. And it, that's a little too quick and cut off for me. However, these three girls from the beginning are always getting into fucking trouble. It's stupid scenarios. But it felt like people I knew, like girls I knew growing up. They will fucking act like idiots. Yes, they will fucking... Okay, yes. Once you know people are out to kill you, all right, then you're a fucking idiot. But, you know, dancing on the table, all that shit. I get it, and I kind of enjoyed it for the most part, but looking at it from a critic lens, I can see the, um, the wear and tear on this movie for people, which is fine. I'll admit that. Again, I'm not embarrassed to like a bad movie. <laughs> And this might be a cult classic. It might like I don't think Morbius will be, but I think this this is gonna be can be a fucking fun movie that people will look back on and watch. Well, I will. I think a lot. And even though they're involved in uh, you know Peter's parents here and there, I was actually I almost admired the sense of getting me involved, where I actually thought something bad might happen to somebody. Like, what would they do? What's going to happen in this situation? Which shouldn't be possible. Because it's predictable, the movie, you know, her precog powers, you know, what's she going to do to save people? But, again, maybe it's just a mindset I'm in. This A bad movie is what I needed. Not a halfway attempt to get a great movie that fell short. I always say this about, like, the movie Heat. Uh, you know, good movie that could have been great. Too much fucking bullshit, but people love it. It's got critical acclaim. Uh, fine. But give me shitty superhero movies, I guess, when I'm in a bad time in my life. And, and you know, raving reviews, I guess. Um, and coming back from taking a break and making this one, I thought it was uh, apt because it's just a little bit of honesty in evaluating some of these movies and what my experience was. So... Again, I'm getting towards the end of the movie. I'm a little surprised that I'm kind of enjoying it and where it was going. Even though, again, like I said, you can kind of know where it's going. It's a little predictable. There's these bright spots here and there. But I think I'm just a comic book geek. And, you know, and they start showing a little bit more and figuring out that she's got to lure this guy, the villain, in a series of precog events, which is fine. It's not done great, but you start getting the idea. She's controlling it. She knows this is going to explode. This is going to come here. We have to duck. We have to go left, not right. Um, but when we go left and we duck, the villain will get hit by a, a car tire, that type of thing. And, the, and the, I thought it was done okay. And she's... Okay, so I kind of passed off when she went to Peru. She learned about the mother, and the guy tells her, um, the tribal leader type thing about her powers and her abilities that she's not even touched them yet. And he says to her, you can be in more than one place at a time. Now, this is kind of funny, and it's a sidetrack because I roleplay in GM, Game Master, DM, uh, Amalgam, like a superhero universe where every superhero is whatever. And there are abilities and stuff where you can do that. Where you can pull yourself from other times, and obviously there's a limit to it. There's a mechanic to the game, but let's say, um, well, there's a guy, there's a co guy in the comic called Quantum. One of the I took my name from, I guess, uh, one of my characters, but he's able to bring like four duplicates from time into the his present, and they can act together and do things together. So I wasn't totally oblivious to the concept, but seeing it in a precog way was a little weird because as things are culminating and again I'm surprised I'm caring and like things are going on with these three fucking you know bumbling idiot girl well no they're not all portrayed as idiots you do have their distinct personalities and some are better than others that are just more fitting for me but again they are like a group of teenagers you would know from being in New York and Queens there's a series of you know the main climax of the movie and she's got to figure out how to save all three. And she does like an astral projection thing. 
and she appears and helps all three of them. And I thought it was a weird way to show it. But again, I was surprised. Like most of the time I'm smiling, I'm having a good time watching the movie. Most of it's ridiculous. It's pulled apart by its own like I don't know. Like what was it its attempt like again, when I think of Morbius and I think of someone who had great editing skills and loved the movie just tried to make the best of what they can do. I get that feeling here, but maybe not in just the editing part. Because I think this movie suffers from editing mishaps and type of plot um, cohesiveness and the, the ebb and flow of everything. So, in that case, it suffers, but like I said when I started this, I wouldn't like movie places to not give a fuck. I want to see the Batman fucking, the Batwoman movie, the Batgirl movie. I know it'll be more like Morbius and this in quality sense, but I don't care. I'm glad I watched those shitty Snyder movies and got my 40 minutes of Man of Steel that's great at the end of the movie. Or well, things I like about Batman vs. Superman was fucking horrible. But hey, that warehouse scene with Batman. I want Snyder to get his own fucking universe and do it online. Get fucking Netflix or one of these powerhouse places. And give the fans what they want. I'm sure I'll find things I love in it. I don't care. I'd like movies like this to be made. A certain budget. Get it out. You know, it's a... Well, not too long. Although it could be put together a little better. I would love to watch these on Saturdays. Every, you know, every week they come on TV from your cable. And I think it's a great ride. Which is fucking shocking, because, again, my brain knows that it's bad. I, you're not going to sit here for, you know, three and a half hours jotting notes on these fucking tears in this movie, but I get it. I get people's critic, you know, their response. I'm a little upset or disappointed in the actresses and the, like, the feedback they're giving, because that sucks. Like, I get you want to make a good movie, and people shit on it but if the studio itself is you know you've got rifle gripes and that's gonna be fucking awful uh you know i don't know i'm not a fucking actor who gets paid a certain amount of money and again you got fucking so much shit going on precog moves that are getting rewound short abrupt things where she's in peru and she's with the tribe people but i kind of enjoyed what they did instead of making this a two and a half hour bad fucking movie. And maybe that's another thing about where I am in life. Um, you know, give me an hour and 45 minute bad movie that has a little bit of romp, brings my comic book nerd out, and I'm going to really enjoy it. Try to give me a two hour and 45 minute movie. You know... At the first Suicide Squad, it's just a fucking mess movie. The second one I kind of enjoy, but it's still a shitty movie. You know, I don't care who the director was and whatever. But, you know, there are, there are fun elements in it. This doesn't have that because it's a little more on the dark side. And I can see what it lends to the, um... You know, the feelings of the tone of the movie. It starts off with the mother, oh, yeah. And then you find out that... Like, why is the fucking mother out in the wilderness pregnant and searching for this thing? Well, it was a cure for a, a, a ailment that the daughter had that she wouldn't survive very long. That's the gist I got. Again, the movie's not great at conveying all this information in a cohesive ebb and flow way. But the gist is the mother's out in 1973 in Peru, pregnant, suffering from pains. And, and later in the movie, when... Cassandra's going through her precog history and going through time. Uh, she's she seeing these events that shaped her mother and her determination to find this cure so her baby would live, which she does because, like I said, the mother gets shot by the Ezekiel who betrays her, leaves her for dead. The natives who are enhanced find her, give her the uh oh bite. The spider bites her, but it only saves the daughter. Can't save her. Fine. The movie at the end. 
uh, you know, a little bit disjointed, but I kind of I kind of liked where they were going. Then they have this Cassie, Cassandra has a Sable 3, and there's like three versions of her. And she manipulates events or plays them out in a way where the villains crush to death. I think I was okay with it. Yes, this is not a fucking great villain. The story is a little disjointed and, you know, peeled apart. And there's holes in it. But as I got to the end of the movie and Cassandra, spoilers, Cassandra is blinded and paraplegic. And it's, you know, you can't tell exactly, but you know she's blind. But she says she sees fine. And then they show these garish costumes and I fucking, la- I smiled. I was like, fucking go for it. Show her in these trying to portray comic accurate portrayals. Stop giving a fuck about Things. I know it's a business, and that kind of sucks in that sense. Um, but if you're Sony or you're the Marvel Entertainment and you made $66 billion, can you say you know half a billion is okay money? It's recoup money from these movies. They don't have to show insane critic response and whatever. I like it. For me, there's no, there's not too much comic book anything. It's so silly to me. You know, comic book or oh, movies. Are this. They've been saying that for fucking 15 years now. Marvel has a fucking solid base. Not at all critically acclaimed movies, but it's there. And it's fucking cohesive for the most part. And it's, to me, it's in a fucking achievement. This Sony universe, if it is part of Marvel, whatever. Because in a way it is. I was okay. You know, because I, like I said, I did my thing. I read... And that they were going to do three movies, and we're going to try to piece together things. And I would I would enjoy it. Even if these things got pushed to seven episode seasons, I, I wouldn't be bad. I wouldn't be mad, and I wouldn't be disappointed. I don't think actors should either. I don't think any actress or actor in here should really negatively feel about their portrayal. Now, yes, you have a legitimate gripe against the studios, directors... Edit, whatever, casting, fine. Promises that were made, whatever, fine. But I've watched movies where you can tell someone's half-assing their job. I didn't get that feeling from here. And I thought I would just easily fucking notice those things. Especially now that I'm doing this podcast and my methods. When this is done and I put this out, I'm going to go look at other people's reviews and it's so funny sometimes where I laugh and shake my head where they will point out something and, and go, look how bad this was done. And I'll go, holy shit. Um, one of the scenes is, uh, I think it's one of the Star Wars movies, um, the fucking shitty sequels. And I think it's probably the last one, whatever. Ray and Kylo Ren are fighting the Crimson God bullshit. And I was like, oh, wow, okay. I kind of enjoyed the fucking scene. But it's one of the worst choreography move sets, combat battle things ever. It is fucking horrible. Disappearing knives and it's all over the internet. And now I hated that fucking movie. I don't like it. But I'm just trying to give an example of Madam Web, I guess a Sony movie, Spider Man universe set thing. For me is a success. I wouldn't mind watching another one. I would like to watch another one. I'd like to see about the spin. I don't give a fuck. Give me Netflix uh, or Disney, well, obviously Disney, Marvel, Sony. Give me uh, this Spider Woman and that Spider Woman. I'll take shorts and tie it into the What If cartoon. Uh, I can't wait to watch my X Men '97 soon. I don't think this will, should ever stop because I don't want it to. Because back in the day, I was into westerns, and I'm sure growing up, parents, my grandparents. That was a big thing, and oh, it faded out, fine. Yes, that could happen, it might happen, maybe it will happen, according to fucking trends and facts, but I don't feel the pressure of that, I don't really care, and when shitty movies get released, I don't like it in that way. Like, I am such a big DC fan, I would wish I could stay here and say, what an achievement. Now, yeah, you can say that about their animation, Holy shit, the Batman, Superman, Justice League cartoons to their movies until they started going, 
fucking bullshit because I could fucking remember where I stopped watching the DC Sorry people. DC Animation's gone to shit. Oh, now, you know what? That's not true. I just gave up on it. But there are gems out there because a friend will come over and say, watch this. Um, Superman vs. the Elite. I thought it was fucking great. But there are newer things. And just, I don't fucking see stupid fucking shit and Batman having sex with fucking Batgirl. What was that? Dark Knight fucking bullshit. Anyway, I am surprised how much I like Madam Web. Although it is fucking not a good movie. I don't know. Uh, it, I think the actress, Dakota Johnson, must be a great actress because I fucking was into it. I like, I really like her in the role. But this happened to me with she hulk right? I, I love the actress playing uh, Jennifer and the transition. But when you look at the time she had or the whatever problems she had, God, you ought to be a good actress to not portray that in the movie. I don't know. Again, I wish I fucking had all the answers for this fucking mystery of the brain, the human brain. But here I am, from kind of promoting a Madam Web fucking movie that I guarantee you, if you went online and looked, it is fucking trash. One of the, all right. I love the idea of Holly Berry going to accept the Razzie Award for Catwoman, because you know what? She played the shit out of Catwoman in that movie. No matter how shitty the movie was, her fucking outfits, the shit they put her through, skin, boobs, fucking poses, shitty movie all around. I wish they would do that with these type of movies. Morbius or, you know, um, the fucking latest DC blunder, there's so many. Which is sad, you know, sad in a way. Um, I wish they would just keep at it. And I'm glad there are things being produced that don't have to be, you know, 400 million sped that has to make a billion. I rather enjoy the Aquaman movie, the aspects of the, or the second one. And I don't even like him as Aquaman. Like, I think he, well, he always talks about thinking he was coming for Lobo. Jason Momoa, which should have been fucking an easy thing. And you should have had a different um, Aquaman, but you went for the fucking star fame. That's fine. But here we are. At the end of my fucking re review, I guess, of Madam Web, do I recommend it to every comic book nerd? Yes. <laughs> like, I, I, you know, and I'm already, just for my little thing i'm already saying things like how could this happen what is it what the fuck are you watching i watch so many fucking movies and things over the years that there are things way worse than this there are superhero movies that are fucking way worse than this but it's the time we live in internet everybody's got a voice even fucking me on a fucking stupid youtube channel but this is a movie that's disjointed and just tries to do things that does, I don't know if it's breaking ground, but I'm like, hey, good for you. You know, and that was pretty cute. That was, that was cool. I enjoyed that. But like, where the fuck are you going in this movie? And what are you trying to do? You pulled it off for me in that sense, but I definitely am sitting there and sitting here now going, this is not going to go well for a majority of people. Fuck do I want to see more? How fucking crazy is that? I'd watch another Morbius movie. I probably would. You know? I'd watch Ben Affleck as fucking Batman again. Without a fucking doubt. Even can I, I, I guess I've said i watch watched Batman and Robin way too many times. Um, just, who gives a shit? But... I get it. It's a fucking business or executives and people who give no fucks about comic books or nerves to them. It's a business that has to make money. You spent this much money on the movie. I got to get this much return. But when the return is compounded with such negative reviews and bad feedback, you know, statements from the actresses themselves, 
I can see where this is going to be a shitstorm for a long time. You know, I don't think most people even give it the time of day. And it's just the general, you know, the times we live in sort of thing. But could this come out in the future as a little gem, a little campy? Well, see, again, it can't be campy because of the dark tones. Again, the mother gets killed, the baby's born, and throughout the movie, they're just showing different ways this guy's killing these girls. <laughs> I mean, he's killing them. And it just zaps back to Cassandra in the present going, this is going to happen, I got to stop it. And good for you, you drive the fucking, you know, taxi, police car, whatever the fuck it was, to the fucking window of a fucking restaurant, which is fucking silly because, you know, most people would be dead, I guess, time, and if you're in the suburbs, the su suburbs or whatever. Anyway, good for the fucking people that get paid to make these movies. Sad that it is a shitty situation, from what I could tell. That kind of sucks, because I'm actually kind of like the actress. Like, I don't even, I, by the way, I don't know her from anything. I don't know anybody, really, um, except for the people, like I mentioned, that I might have seen somewhere, like, the guy who plays Peter's father. I, I, you know the face. Emma Roberts, Mike Epps. But I don't know who Dakota Johnson, what she even does. Uh, hold on. Uh, this could be one of those things where you go back and you see her everywhere. Because it says, I just looked at a quick thing that says she started her acting thing at age 10. Like, what the fuck is that? Good for you. And maybe she does know enough about the industry and been in it where she can really rip on them. So fine. I'd like to give the benefit of the doubt. Um, I don't know. I'll take a quick look. Because uh, I'm surprised like how much I like her and things. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if people come in and say, oh, you should watch this. She's amazing. Uh, you know, I guess the Nats and Natalie Portman thing, I guess. So. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I don't think... Uh, 21 Jump Street. I think I've seen that. I've definitely seen it. I don't remember her in it. Um... No, uh... Suspiria. Did I watch that? No, let's assume I didn't. Um, yeah, I've never seen anything. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, hold on, TV. Uh, hold on, there might be TV. I guess The Office I've seen. Hmm. Sign that live host. Yeah, like, her face is familiar to me. Okay, I could, I could probably see that. Anyway, Dakota Johnson, I thought, did a fucking great job. And I said this about the actress of She-Hulk. Yeah, I might get a fucking reputation for liking bad things, but fuck it. I don't care. I enjoy, I enjoy things if they're shitty, fine, the bad, bad taste in fucking movies. But sometimes I think I nail it, and yeah, time in my life, mood, what's going on around me, you know, things that are going on in life, and I just want to get on here and fucking shit all over this. But I can't find it in my heart, it's not true, it's not something, and yeah, I might, again, go out to another podcast and watch someone's review and agree with every fucking thing they do to rip apart the movie. And, well, let's get into a little bit of the fucking music real quick for you. Yes, it was a little cringe here and there. But you're trying to do a time movie. It adds, and I thought it worked for the most part. You know, except if you want to do the Britney Spears things. Well, that's not my type of music. But, you know, me, you got to get me with, like, a, something from the 70s, obviously. You know, do the Rolling Stones. And then you get to the 2000s, you might get some... Nirvana or something like that. I would I go. To, I think I mentioned that in the other movie where I watched. Um, uh, I don't know what the fuck it was, but they used a good song, and I was like, you know what? Oh, uh, we care a lot. Yeah, that's right. It was uh, Fate No More. That guy's still fucking going around. He's not the most. Um, I think he was the most fucking gifted voice actor, but. Some singers in the genre are just so good at what they fucking do. I was Guardians of the Galaxy, I think I did it. Anyway, yeah, this is going on a little too long for a movie that's not that good, that I just happen to like a lot. 
like the actress. I like some of the chemistry. I fucking like the silly fucking outfits. <laughs> so fuck oh fuck me, I guess, in that sense. Um, all right, I guess that's it. Madam Web. Watch it. I liked it. What am I going to say? All right, everybody. Have a good one. My best to you and yours. Take care.